In the expansive universe of Roblox, where creativity knows no bounds, certain developers stand out among the crowd. Their creations capture the imagination of millions, leaving an indefinite mark on the platform. One such developer, known for his innovative approach and captivating games, is none other than Defaultio. Famous for his acclaimed creation, Welcome to Bloxburg, Defaultio became a household name within the Roblox community. But behind the scenes, there was another project shrouded in mystery, a game that held the promise of adventure, intrigue, and untold secrets. This is the story of Eclipsis. But before we tell the story of Eclipsis, we need to ask, what is Eclipsis? Created on January 27th, 2017, Eclipsis is a game where people are thrown into a world of relentless challenges in unforgiving landscapes. They construct bases, harness resources, and engage in fierce battles against people, all in a desperate bid to win. Yet the main question still stands, how did this game go from having thousands of players actively playing it, to now barely 50? Well the main reason was, they got lazy. The developers stopped updating the game, and as months went by, the player count kept dropping, and dropping, and dropping, until nobody wanted to play Eclipsis, and when the developers finally did update the game, everyone had already left. As we've seen the rise and fall of Eclipsis, it shows us a lot about game developing and community engagement. Now that you know what Eclipsis is and what happened to it, it's time to address the real reason of making this video. I was introduced to Eclipsis when Flamingo made a video on it a few years ago, and ever since then I've become one of the top leaderboard players and have seen all there is to the game. The player count still reaches 100 players on Saturday nights on average, and basically what I'm getting at is, Eclipsis can still be revived. Which brings me to my final question. Do you like to commit terrorism? Murder? Nuking an entire team? Well if so, you should play Eclipsis. So now it's time for me to show you the gameplay you've been waiting on. Just a warning, the fundamentals are not beginner friendly, so if your IQ is below 10, you should leave now. Okay, thanks for joining me. Upon joining, you're sent into the tutorial, which introduces you to Iridium. Yes, those blue meth crystals, which are not meth, I promise. Iridium's the cocaine of the game. You can use it to fly, shoot guns, Stuff, commit terror. And if you want to do anything, anything cool at least, you're gonna need Iridium. You're given a tool, the Portafab. Now this can suck in or ejaculate Iridium. Here's a simple demonstration. The tutorial wants us to build something called the well pump, which I will get into it in a second. But in order to build it, we press E on this crystal here, fill up our backpack, and now we piss that Iridium back into this well pump blueprint. And that, folks, is how you make, ma I mean, how you build. Now this well pump is making us 5 iridium per second, which isn't much, but at least it's trying. There is, however, a problem. It's being wasted just like your time when you're not liking the video. To prevent the leak, we can either put a cap on it, or preferably, connect it to something that needs iridium, like this arsenal. And now, you basically are ready to win the game in the first of four ways, early rushing. Early rushing is basically what we discussed earlier. You grab your nerf gun, kill the enemy's cocaine factory, and you're done, right? WRONG! Sometimes your enemy has way better nerf gun aim, causing you to be bullied like in this scenario. Now that I finished learning how to do the basics, it's time to put my new skill into action. Here we go, guys! <laughs> Moving on to the next category, basing. Now basing, otherwise known as sprawling, is pretty simple. We need well pumps, which will produce energy. You see, well pumps are like Chinese child labor camps. They keep producing that sweet, sweet crystal ma- I, I mean iridium you need for your base. Now we're gonna finish upgrading our well pumps so we can get more of that energy production. Okay, now that we've finished upgrading those pumps, we're gonna start a sky base. And the most obvious question here is, can we recreate 9-11 with- um, I mean, what is a sky base? and how do we use it. As you guessed it, a sky base is what its name is, a base in the sky. People usually try to recreate Hiroshima with sky bases by bombing everyone with artillery from the top, but that's a pretty unethical way of killing someone, so uh, yeah, don't do that in real life, guys. Anyway, it's time to show what a sky base fight finally looks like. 
As you can see, both teams are getting ready to Hiroshima each other. Why did Hornets just place an artillery sideways? You know what, I won't judge. It could be meta. Looks like Blue hits the first shot! Wait a second, this looks familiar- And you just keep pushing with artillery like Blue is doing, and you can pretty much win any sky fight you play, unless you're slower than your enemy. And it looks like Orange is about to lose as soon as Blue gets his artillery piped up. Orange is trying to cover up his pipe with bridges to possibly protect it, and Blue is the shot, GG's. Now that we've seen basing and rushing, it's time to move on to the third category, sea basing, or as I like to call it, the drug lab. This is a 2v2 match with two POVs of each teammate sea basing. Usually in sea basing, you just place these things called submersibles and you would stack three per row on top of each other repeatedly like these guys are doing here. And then you keep creating these rows of subs until you have enough for whatever you want to build. After getting a submersible, they place distributors on the sides to power anything they place without them needing to fill with their portafab. The stuff that they're placing after they keep placing their submersibles are called fabricators. These are basically like mini portafabs that will just fill your stuff for you so you don't have to do it. After you got the amount of subs that you need or want, you start placing shields, you get some defense by placing some turrets, and then you're going to head up, and now we're going to talk about our next category, Boar Spam. Before we explain what Boar Spam is, you guys are probably asking, what is a boar? Well, it's basically a laser that gets more damage over time, and its main use is to kill people's shields on their bases. Now, to actually do Boar Spam, you create something called an expansion, where you basically just place distributors and fabricators with turrets to go forward. Then you'd place a line of boars and then turn them on and you would just repeat this process until your enemy's base is destroyed. Now as you can see, our boars killed their shields, so what's the next step? We're going to create a mini sky base with artilleries to finish off the enemy's buildings. Your enemy will be trying to constantly rush your mini sky base and kill it using a laser strike, which is basically an airstrike that you can spawn. So if you do lose your sky base, just rebuild it and try to shoot the artillery at the player if you can. If your sky base artilleries don't reach, just keep going up with ladders and go forward with bridges so you can reach the inner part of your enemy's base. Usually in boar spam, after killing your enemy's top base, you would expand to these yellow blocks on the map called beacon blocks and if you get the amount of beacon blocks you need, depending on how many teammates you have, as soon as it's built, after 120 seconds, a never-ending air strike of nukes everywhere on your enemies will start raining down on them, winning you the game. Here comes the beacons. As the countdown finishes, all the airstrikes start raining down on our enemies, and we finally won. There's only so much justice a video can do to a game as beautiful as this. From here on, I pass the torch to you, my fellow viewer. Eclipses starts today and lives on in my heart forever. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe.